positive way uh, in people. Hey, Mary, so how did you get this uh, latest project, uh, Battle in Seattle? Well, uh, this project, first of all, it's good to speak with you, Luke. It's been a while. Yes. <laughs> and um, it's, been a, it's been a long time, but I always see the interview that we did originally up there on the Internet. Um, Battle in Seattle came to me as a lot of projects do as an independent producer. When you're sort of in a certain realm or level, um, you get early agents, uh, like the head of, you know, whether it's Endeavor or ICM, William Morris, CAA, uh, we get the pleasure of having a sense of trust there, and they continue to bring projects. Uh, so this was brought to me uh, by a very prominent agent named Graham Taylor uh, at the Endeavor Agency. He's the head of independent there, and said, hey, now, I've got a project that's meaningful. I was looking for something that I felt when I walked out of the theater, when I walked out of Crash, uh, and I, I was looking for something that was a challenge, an ensemble piece certainly is, uh, something that would um, uh, ignite some passion in a positive way uh, in people instead of just exploitative, um, you know, I've done all kinds of movies, but something that would do that. And so he uh, introduced me to Stuart Townsend, the writer-director of Battle in Seattle. Uh, it was Stuart's first script, first he had not even directed a short, but something in the room when I met Stuart, um, who really was well known as an actor at the time only, um, ignited the passion in me. And this is a gentleman that's uh, Irish, not American, uh, staunch Irish, um, and uh, really at the time said, you know, explained his passion, why he got involved, um, and, and why this was important. So I looked at this at producerial end. And I also looked at it as a passion project and the meaning behind it. And also, uh, as a producer, Shelley Theron was attached at the time uh, because of her, her belief in the project, let me say that first, and also her personal relationship with Stuart. She got behind it very strongly. And all of those things added up to me wanting to do the project. So that's how I got it. When did you first meet with Stuart? I met with Stuart, I'm not going to be able to give you an exact date because I don't remember, but I can tell you that it was in 2006, and I believe it was in the summer of 2006 when we first connected. And so at that point, had he already written the screenplay? He had. He had written uh, the original screenplay. We, it has gone through a few drafts by now, uh, now what you see now. But yes, he had written it by then. Yes, and it had been out there a little bit. Uh, I actually had a friend of mine who produced Bobby that was looking at it. Uh, but I got it right away. I got what the vision could be of the film. I understood it, again, for the meaning of it, but also just as a, as a, as a producer, the value and understanding, you know, just of having, you know, like we could attract a really great cast. That's what I got. Now... I'm looking at IMDb, and there are like five people credited as producer, and like eight people credited as executive producer. Uh, what was yeah. your What was your contribution to this project? Uh, I can tell you very clearly. First of all, it it is very hard when I see that, um, and I'm not going to go into who uh, because I won't do that. But I will tell you that. In the world that we live in, so let me answer the first question of independent uh, producing. Uh, I earn my credit, and I work really hard. I think my one vice in my life right now is that I am a workaholic, uh, but I enjoy what I do. And I actually went out, got the project, worked with Stuart. I raised 80% um, of the financing, a financer in Vancouver, <clears throat> who was my partner at the time, uh, that's Insight Films. Then I um, got wind of a company in Montreal called Remstar, and I knew that they had a passion. They had done Head in the Clouds with Charlize and Stewart. In fact, I believe that's where they met. And uh, I had a contact in Vancouver that said, you know, I think they might be interested. So I flew out there, and I closed that deal, and that was the other part of the money. I then met with Ashok Amitraj. Lisa Wilson, Hyde Park Entertainment, very prestigious foreign sales company and production, 
and brought them to the table with the foreign sales component in doing some pre-sales. And then I brought in a company called Gloucester Park, and Gloucester Park is a very prestigious debt funder. They do, I guess they've probably done over 40, 50 films. And putting all those components together, I actually probably did about 90% of the financing on this. Uh, that brought it all together. And that's sort of how I do these. I, when I spoke at Women in Film, um, or the Producers Guild of America, uh, people ask, well, how do you do so many movies, you know, one right after the other? There's no ancient Chinese secret, you know, there's an expression, or there's no secret to it. I do like to help people learn there are ways to mitigate investors' risk by putting in a debt fund, equity, pre-sales, and of course now, which was very prominent in Canada at the time, soft money. We had a 20% tax credit there. So when you mix it all together and you sort of mix it up together, it's the sort of producer's vegetable soup, and you put it all together, it can come out really well, and you can mitigate the risk. Uh, now in America, and I'm an American, we have um, tax credits. You know, in each city, there's so many from, you know, 5% up to 41% in Michigan. So most of my productions are now done in America, but back then, that's it. And also the dollar was a lot, it, our dollar was stronger, I should say. So it was easier to shoot in Canada at the time when it was cost effective. So that's how I put it together. Uh, let, me, let me voice my opinion about all these executive producers. Yes. Um, I'm not going to, again, point any fingers, and I'm not going to do it, but I will just say in a generic sense that uh, there's a lot of times people are put on because they know somebody or they bring in a piece of uh, the last bit of financing or they'll... <sighs> there were a lot of credits put on where I feel that it less is more, and I think sometimes when credits are not always warranted on films, and I'm going to leave it at that. So yeah. my role, I can only, do, I'll only explain to you in, in a political protocol here that was my role, and that's what I did. And I'm a very tried and true believer that people earn their credits. It doesn't always work out that way. In Hollywood or all over the world, people get credited for certain things, and they're very lucky sometimes. So we'll leave it at that. Um, I can tell you that Stuart Townsend has worked extremely hard. And he worked extremely hard not only as a writer and as a director, but at the end of the day, we had a very good casting uh, team on. They did crash. I brought them on. I also hired them on with Stuart uh, because they did crash. But at the end of the day, Stuart Townsend really brought a third of that cast in, and so did I with Ed Hiller. So, you know, we did everything. Um, and, um, you know, it was a pretty extraordinary feat what he's done. Um, he was very direct, very focused, uh, was going to do it his way, but the way that it ended up was the right way. He did a phenomenal job. I have to tell you, he, uh, it's extraordinary. The critics... It's sort of when you see the critics' reviews, it speaks for itself. Um, our distribution is another uh, hard spot because we, we had an independent distrib distributor, really the guys that executive produced it, come on board because we got caught in um, an independent company that had done a bidding war in Toronto. And uh, they kind of went belly up. And we got caught. We gave it to them. And unfortunately, we got caught in a quagmire where they, you know, we were sort of just on the shelf. And this is a phenomenal film. We've got a standing ovation in Toronto, standing ovation closing the Seattle Film Festival, which was our toughest audience because it all happened there. And we've got a standing ovation basically in all the screenings that we've had, the prestige, you know, the festival screenings, pure standing ovation. And not a quick one, long ones, you know. And, you know, this is a great film. The unfortunate thing is with limited advertising or P&A, it's hard to get people in sometimes, so word of mouth is what we are hoping for and still hoping for. Uh, when was this movie shot? We shot this movie uh, in November, October and November, and ending in December of 2006. And we shot it, and I remember having Thanksgiving dinner we had just finished midnight in the snow and the sleet and the rain and all that stuff in the middle of the streets of Vancouver. We blocked them off. We shot Vancouver and Seattle. We obviously could not do this movie, by the way, without shooting in Seattle. And the person that was most uh, most demanding of that, I have to give him credit, was Stuart Townsend again, saying you can't shoot battle in Seattle, all of it in Vancouver. We were trying to obviously mitigate our costs at the time, and I think Seattle has implemented or is implementing a tax credit there 